In this video, we'll be discussing the importance of cybersecurity for your business and the best ways to remain secure. So welcome to Profiltry TV and we're very excited to have John Bailey in from Salt DNA. So John, thank you very much for coming in. No problem, thanks for having me. Amazing. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your company. Yes, yeah, so I'm the head of marketing at Salt DNA and Salt DNA are a cybersecurity company based right here in Belfast. And we offer a secure communications platform that we would sell all across the world to governments, law firms, banks, across a number of different industries. Mm -hmm. And as we've spoken to a number of times, we see all parts of the world um, and we meet some very, very interesting people. Amazing. And you're, 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 you've got your passport in your jacket pocket re ready to go. You're, yeah, you all, travel everywhere. All the time. Yeah, we're, we're quite frequent flyers. Um, myself and our CEO would be around the world quite a lot meeting with different clients meet with partners um, for my work, for my job, maybe quite frequent different events all around the world. And we sort of have probably a better reputation abroad more than we even do in Northern Ireland. So we have to have a global footprint. Amazing. So we probably be traveling at least twice, twice a month or so. Um, more the CEO than I would, but <laughs> it's, you see a lot of the world in a very short amount of time. All ha hands on deck. So exactly. And, and incredible again, so same as ourselves, we, we'd be, more well known abroad than we are here, yeah. uh, so it's it's amazing. But again, that's because we we live in our probably our reputation and online, so it's it's great to see. Exactly. So so what you've been to or you're going to San Francisco and all these places? I'm just I'm so jealous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I know. It's, I mean, it's it's great opportunity too. But um, we'll be at San Francisco. We'll be in San Francisco for RSA conference mm -hmm. in a few weeks. Um, so we'll be there too. North America is one of our target markets for 2019 so we're hoping to build up partnerships there meet with a few clients um, and we have a few media bookings as well to go and speak with some media outlets over there and yes. uh, we have some sort of big product news coming right over there so that'll be quite an exciting trip um, and then a few more trips in march and, and april and then you know the rest of the year is, is quite heavily booked as well Let's see what happens so exactly. you have clients in america um, europe africa asia basically everywhere a lot of places not none in none in northern ireland um, no, no, no. no we, I mean, from where we started, we effectively had to become a, a born global type of company. Um, we did our research and whenever we were starting up and we were developing the product, we went to test the, mar uh, test the market with local companies, as a lot of technology firms would do. But we didn't believe that there was the level of education and the level of knowledge really needed to embrace what we were trying to sell. Mm -hmm. So we had to go abroad. So we started building up partnerships and looking at regions that really understood the threat that we were trying to solve and the issue we were trying to solve. So we looked at Africa to begin with, we looked at the Middle East mm -hmm. and we're start, now starting to sort of bring it back in to Europe and the UK. Um, we have we do quite a lot of business in London as well, but again, the, the island of Ireland is um, it's near enough untouched for us, but there's a lot of opportunity now. Incredible. And, and just again, so if anyone doesn't know, so what kind of products or what solutions do you offer then to your clients? So we offer a secure communications platform. It's effectively very like, like, like some WhatsApp and Signal. So on the user's end device, it would be a communication app that you could carry out a one-to-one -one call, a conference call. You could send a one-to-one -one, one -one message mm -hmm. or a group message or you know video attachments, audio attachments. It very much has the look and feel of a consumer machine application, but it's very, very different to what the likes of WhatsApp and Fiber offer because we've been built from the ground up for the enterprise. Everything's been developed to fit the needs of a, an official organization who need to communicate across the globe on any network about important information that they just can't have fallen into the wrong hands. It's a type of a two-tier system where you would have the messaging application mm -hmm. working alongside the management portal. And the management portal is actually in place to give the organization much more capability and control of their communication system. So they can control who gets invited onto the system, they can control who gets, who, who communicates with who within the system, and they can also, and most importantly, control how and where their metadata is being stored. So many of the different consumer offerings on the market, the issue with them is you really don't know what is being done with your information and with the messages and the phone calls that you exchange. Whereas with our solution, we either offer it as a cloud-based solution or we, we provide the control to the organization if they want to take it and place it within their own chosen infrastructure as well so that they can really take full control. And obviously with stories about Cambridge Analytica and Facebook, mm -hmm. the ability and the, the need to know what is happening with your information is much more prevalent 
all across the world with large organisations. Incredible. No, I'm thinking of the likes of solicitors, like my word, the, the data that's transferred between, especially global offices. Exactly. I mean, we would work with quite a number of law firms. Um, Mishkan Dere would be one of our key reference clients. Mm -hmm. and But our, our system is used by law firms across the world who need to discuss litigation cases or who are negotiating M&A deals. And anything worth any substance, effectively, you need to ensure that that information is secure and private. Otherwise, it can fall in the wrong hands. And I mean, there's a few cases, I think it was in 2016, where there was hackers across the world who were able to intercept information of an M&A deal happening and ended up making millions on the stock market because they knew that the exchange or the purchase was about to take place. So it's that type of information. And a lot of time, it's to ensure the highest level of client care and Protect the market as exactly, well. Exactly. Yeah. Incredible. I'm thinking as well. Uh, GDPR coming in. It probably yes. didn't do you guys any harm. <laughs> it didn't. No. Um. I mean, we we would work with, like I said, we work with numerous different industries across the world, and and they would need it for different reasons. So we would work quite a lot with, with law enforcement, defence, and security would be one of our key target areas. Um. And the reason for that is is obviously the ability to take ownership of the system, but we do do a lot of work with financial institutions across the world and insurance. And they need now to have a security archive version of all communications within their own servers and be able to go back and, and regroup on that and be able to actually get access to the content of the messages. And that's something we actually looked into or pretty proactive around once the GDPR requirements came in place or they announced that they were coming into place. So we set up the ability to security archive all communications within your own chosen infrastructure. Obviously, for privacy reasons, we don't want to have access to it. We don't ever want to have or hold the content of any of our customers' data, but they have the ability to place it within their own servers, be able to search and get access to the content of the communications, which is a is a massive part of what GDPR is. Incredible. I'm thinking again, as you're taking us through your system, the likes of what happened to the NHS and the hacking, they were talking about private data, and mm -hmm. there's so many cases of hacking. There is, and, and a lot of the time, I mean, the NHS case alone is an example of a cyber th attack or a cyber threat that's been faced over the past few years and the biggest issue for for organizations that came out of that in my belief is that the likes of ransomware the nhs got full access to that and knew that it was taking place because they had a warning pop up in their systems saying you've been hacked you need to pay this amount to get your information back and the key learnings for me from that was organizations need to keep up to date with their security patches they need to have a clear understanding of what is going on and in the ransomware case, in the, in the WannaCry case that, that you're referring to, organizations were prompted that the cyber attack was, was actually happening to them. A lot of the time it's happening in the background and they don't know about it. And it's happening silently for years at a time. And that's the biggest issue around that. It's, it does happen. There's no such thing as it won't happen to me anymore. It happens to everyone all across the world. And the technologies that, that can be used to intercept people's information is now very affordable, not like it used to be 10 years ago. I mean, Edward Snowden's a prime example and sort of a key example we would come back to for what we do in terms of the capabilities for organizations to intercept your communications or your information as a whole. That used to cost, you know, one of the, it's an MZ catcher is used to intercept communications now. And they would have cost maybe half a million, um, $500,000 about 10 years ago. Whereas now you can actually build your own one you can either, or you can buy the parts from eBay or Alibaba for less than a thousand dollars. So it's that simple. Anyone who, who is exchanging sensitive information that they believe is worth a certain amount of money, they're highly likely that their information is being intercepted. But for the NHS example, for the NHS example, they were actually notified that it was there, which is sort of it's a bit of a silver lining that they were able to get around their data, get back their information, so they can actually pay the hackers to actually give them back their information or else they can simply have a system in place to back up every single bit of their information and they can get rid of the hardware that has the ransomware in place. Uh, incredible and I'm just thinking even of our own business but even small businesses now are, are uh, it's incredible the risk that is there in the data that we all have and, and GDPR is putting a, a, a big focus on it for, for everyone to be more aware so hence I'm very excited yeah. that you're in today explaining what's happening out there. Yeah no absolutely yeah. I mean there's no such thing as too small for a cyber attack there's it can be a large corporation who's 
every day exchanging hundreds of thousands of important pieces of information. Or a small company may exchange a handful, but that handful to a cyber, a hacker, or even a competitor can be very, very valuable. So it's not about the size of the organization, it's about the importance of the content that they're sharing. Exactly, and especially to the, the, the owner, or the, the business owner, or the business themselves. Like exactly. It could be a small business, but actually that data could be critically important to the business. If it's leaked and clients see it, or it is confidential data, it could actually ruin a company. So there's no doubt. It's amazing. And that, from our side, and I'm thinking websites, uh, I don't even think people realise. Like we, we've software on all the sites protecting them, mm-hmm. but people, our customers and people probably watching us don't realise how many times a website can be attacked every single day from spam comments through to uh, people trying to take over the site uh, to the de- denial of service. So people don't realise how rampant it is and uh, it's definitely going to get worse exactly. sadly so I don't know what's amazing, amazing. Yeah. I mean it's, it's, it's you still see it even companies who provide security services and you go on the website it's not secure and it's <laughs> it's incredible that this still happens in 2019 but the need to secure absolutely everything that holds any form of information yeah. is becoming more and more yeah. important uh, it's, a, it's a basic standard and I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. I've actually been on a security site that wasn't secure yeah. so it's like what is going on? It's unbelievable. But anyway, we have to exactly. down that one. So, so obviously, how, how many years have you been in operation then? So Salt was founded in 2013. Wow. Um, so we were actually founded out of Belfast. Mm-hmm. The founders and the guys who actually set up the company were working over in Silicon Valley at the time for companies like F5 Networks and Blue Code Systems. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the normal Irish contingent over there found each other. And some of the guys had worked with each other before. Uh, but they really, at that time, they had sort of in discussions about the demise of the BlackBerry and the rise of the iPhone and CEOs coming into companies and instead of them using their, their Blackberries as would have been company protocol, they were walking into their IT department, putting the new, newest iPhone on the table and saying, I want to use this now. And it was happening all across the world. But there was nothing that really focused in on the level of control that was necessary for any form of enterprise solution. So the founders, their experience and their background was previously in network optimization, enterprise solution providers, and uh, lawful interception. And those guys sort of got together, started considering what a secure communications platform for the enterprise would look like. Mm -hmm. And effectively, the first thing that they saw was it needs to have the highest level of control possible. Because there's a lot of consumer messaging applications out there. I I know I've mentioned WhatsApp and Fiber and Signal. But these guys offer encryption and they are labeled encryption as secure communications. And for us, encryption is a a fundamental aspect of these meshing apps. But nowadays, it's only sort of one part of what makes a meshing app secure. For us, the other part of that is they need to have complete control of the system and full accountability of the system. And it's only until encryption is alongside control and accountability is your system actually secure. And that's what we offer and that's what we developed from day one. So like any big or good software company, you know, we thought it would take around 12 to 18 months to develop the MVP for what we were selling. And of course it took much longer because once we started getting into it and figuring out what needed to be fixed or what needed to be done, there was much, much more than we had previously imagined. And we weren't willing to send this out to market, not ready. So it took around... 18 to 24 months, 24 months really, to get the MVP to take it out to market and start you know, working with reference customers that had actually stated this was an issue for them. So that's sort of where we started off from a development perspective. And we started ramping up our sales and marketing efforts around three, three and a half years ago. And from then, as I, as I stated earlier, we, we sort of analyzed the markets that we were trying to operate in. And we figured out that the knowledge of what we were trying to to sell mm-hmm. and the need for what we were trying to sell just wasn't there yeah. so we went and got our customers abroad and we started to bring it back and our normal sort of selling proposition is is working with channel partners and the guys who actually have the relationships but we spent a lot of time sort of a two-pronged approach in terms of building up the channel program that we have with the right types of partners that we want and trying to build a reputation and we've actually had to go abroad to do that as well and then bring it back in so i mean we've been recognized on numerous different cybersecurity lists you know the cybersecurity 500 which is the list of the top 500 cybersecurity companies in the world and we're like ranked at 244 um which for a small 
cybersecurity company based in Belfast that not a lot of people in Belfast know about is is quite significant. Um, I mean, we've been recognised by the analysts of them. Um, we won the cybersecurity and innovation product or company of the year in 2017. And we're continually getting shortlisted for big awards all across the world. Um, sort of week in, week out, it'd be rare that we're not shortlisted for something. Incredible, and long may this continue. Yeah, fingers global crossed. Global domination, here we come. Actually, Irish, you've already dominated the world. It's Irish domination. It's actually Irish domination now, yeah. <laughs> You mentioned encryption there, and as you say, these these messaging apps. And you're totally right. In, in my ignorance, uh, I was thinking it's encrypted, solid, safe, yeah. but not the case. So now I'm, I've been educated in that. So exactly, excellent. I didn't know, and I'm sure most people don't realise that it's not. No, and, and you're not alone. I mean, we we go in, and some of the stories we've heard from the clients that we talk to. I mean, there's law enforcement clients we went into, and and they're using WhatsApp, or some are actually using Facebook Messenger to exchange highly important information, highly sensitive information to each other and that can be the difference between life and death for some for some of the companies we work with or some of the organisations we work with. For other companies we work with it could be the difference in, in their reputation being threaded, um, cyber espionage that's constantly happening across the globe and not really knowing what is going on or where that information is being stored. It's, it, it's For me it's a no-brainer and but we're continually having to educate people and that's sort of why we went abroad to start with and we sort of went for the low hanging fruit even though it was across the world because they knew they were being hacked, they knew the issue with it and it's now coming back, it's less of an education programme that we're doing now, it's more that people understand the threat, they understand the need to have control of their system and in a lot of cases that can actually be a white label, and br like a branded version of their app placed within their own infrastructure that they privately deploy or privately distribute and we offer everything that needs to be offered because we took the time to understand and develop the enterprise offering mm -hmm. and the enterprise solution that we now have. Incredible. Excellent. And again, it's actually very similar path to ourselves, our services, you know, content online lead generation. Mm -hmm. Here we'd find that the, the market isn't that developed yet. Mm -hmm. Some people are investing in it. Most aren't. And hence, internationally, people understand and get it. We just seem to be, uh, f f I guess, they're seem to be slightly ahead uh, in, in development? Slightly ahead in their understanding in terms of working with organisations. In terms of the, the levels of innovation being shown in Belfast and Northern Ireland is, is at an all-time high though. Um, I mean, you've got cybersecurity startups happening all around the place. I mean, you've got like some Modius Health who are making big movements. Um, you've got smaller and other FDI projects coming into Belfast because of the level of graduates we have here as well. So the levels of innovation that we're showing here in Belfast and in Northern Ireland specifically are incredibly high um, and that's sort of, we're one of the founding members of the cybersecurity cluster and it's a group of cyber companies based in Northern Ireland working together to get the name or the sort of reputation of Northern Ireland as a cybersecurity hub up and it really is now. It's sort of being recognised a few places as the cybersecurity hub of Europe and the 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 levels of innovation and capabilities shown by smaller and large cybersecurity firms based in Belfast is incredible. And it's not that the knowledge of what is going on isn't here, it's it's the budgets and understanding the need for, for organizations to employ this or deploy this within their within their companies. Mm -hmm. It's not as advanced as other regions we work with, mm -hmm. but the level of product that's actually coming out of Belfast and Northern Ireland as a whole is staggering and it's at an all time high at the minute. Incredible. So you've seen massive growth in the digital sector here then? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, sort of getting to see it every day. That's the reason why big events are even coming here. I mean, OWASP o o AppSec was here last year, um, another globally known event, and it was hosted in Belfast. And it's because you have the right people, you have the, the technology people going to these events, having these high level of conversations with the people who really want to, to hear about it and listen to it. So it is only a matter of time before people sort of sit up and start realising and start understanding the levels of of innovation and, and the high capabilities of cybersecurity and technology coming out of Belfast because it's there and it's only growing at the moment. Incredible. I totally agree actually. The people the people mm -hmm. that we have here are amazing. Yeah. And that's fueling our company and, and you're right, global domination for Northern yeah. Ireland and uh, companies from here which is great so you've talked about I guess uh, one of the challenges that you face is that um, companies maybe don't appreciate or understand the mm -hmm. need 
But there's, is there other challenges then facing the industry? Facing the industry, there's, I mean, there's, there's numerous different challenges, and there's more than just that for us. I mean, us as a whole, we, there are competitors to what we do. They don't offer the same type of control that we do, or they don't offer some of the same features that we do. But what they do beat us in is the amount of money they've taken, and trying to play against someone who's taken hundreds of millions in VC money. In comparison to what we've done, our ours has been very small scale, grow slowly to a point where we're now starting to see major opportunity. Is we had to be very strict and very smart about what we did with our small budgets. So we've managed to build ourselves a reputation. We've managed to get our name out there. We've managed to get some big clients, and we've done that on not not a no budget. We've had a budget, but not in comparison to what our competitors have had. So trying to sort of stay afloat on the same playing field or or stay ahead on the same playing field with a company that's taken multiple, multiple times more money than you have is a very, very difficult to actually do as well. So that's one of the other struggles that we've had or we had to get we had to get over as we began to grow the company. Um and the again the the levels of knowledge when we were starting off here and we had to go abroad. But they've always they haven't been struggles for us. They've been barriers that we've had to overcome. And we've, we've always been positive about doing that. Whilst we have a very small, we have a very hungry team and every single person rises to the challenges that we have and that's what we've had to do from the very start with Salty and it. Yes, incredible. And, and thinking of different industries then, mm -hmm. um, the cyber requirements, security requirements, different per industry. So we talked about, I can imagine, the legal profession. Yeah. We talked about law enforcement. Um, but So it's different in every industry, is that the way? Absolutely. I mean, the challenges that the different industries we work with have and the use cases for what we do is very different as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, for oil and gas companies that we work with, a lot of the time they need to be able to purchase land to set up different fields in um, and they need to be able to allow for cross-border communications and on-site communications without, whenever you're, whenever you're dealing with oil and gas, mm -hmm. it's, it's an unbelievably lucrative company and lucrative business. So you need to keep every single piece of information completely quiet and silent. So they need to have the, the level of control that we offer. The likes of law firms and law enforcement, you know, they need to be able to, to tap into that information for evidential recall. They need to be able to keep their communications private. For the level of information that they're sharing, um, it's so sensitive that they need to keep it controlled. And that's why we offer a closed user group. So everything that happens on the Salty and A app remains internal and every single piece of information that is shared, it's shared to a trusted user within the system. So, I mean, there's, there's so many different use cases for, and we could go into a company and expect to understand their use case based on previous experiences we've had. And a lot of times they blow us out of the water with what they need us to do. And the, the stories we've heard are incredible. The use cases are, are insane, but that's why we've built our solution so flexible I mean, we don't offer just one type of metadata option for how information is stored. We offer three because we've understood and we've done the research that we need to provide organizations across numerous different industries with different ways to manage their metadata in the way that they need to. And we all also offer a multi-tier, multi-tenant system to allow them to provide or to have control of their system, but also provide different layers of control to organizations they work with for law firms and and governments or else different sectors of their organization for seniority, for example. Um, but we understand the compliance and regulatory reasons behind our system. We understand the cyber espionage reasons behind why people would want our system. And we also understand sort of life and death situations where you need to be able to transmit messages and secure messages to chosen and trusted employees. And you need to be able to do that efficiently and securely with full confidence that everything you're saying is going to the person and nobody else. Listen, wow. And and if anyone's watching this and not convinced that they need secure communications in their business, I'm thinking of business owners, yeah. what, what would you say to them? Well, say it's, it's not just secure communications. I mean, it's the cybersecurity solutions as a whole. I mean, there's organizations around there that still believe that cyber attacks just simply won't happen. And it won't happen to me. It won't happen to me is the line we hear all the time. And it's not the case anymore. I mean, cyber solution, cyber security uptake is increasing, but the levels of revenue being made from cyber attacks is increasing much, much quicker. And that's because people are still adamant that it's not a focus. I mean, cyber security has now become a C-level 
interest, but it still needs greater understanding and greater interest to actually push it through. And you can't just bring in solutions and expect it to that'll fix it. It's from the organization from top to bottom. There needs to be a culture instilled. There needs to be an understanding of what needs to be done. You can't expect solutions to be brought in to just fix the issue. People need to be taught about the importance of the issues, the different issues they face. It could be not just secure communications and mobile interception threats, but it could be phishing and malware and password threats um, and, and even insider threats that, that organizations can face. So organizations need to think about the importance of every single aspect of cybersecurity and cyber attacks. But for secure, communi secure communications alone, it's so simple to tap into someone's phone. It's so easy to, to get hold of the information that they're sharing. And it's, it's not really acceptable. And there's, there's so many offerings. There's so many ways to get around it. And there's so many ways to protect yourself from that. That it's, if you're dealing with client information, or if you're dealing with information of a multi-billion dollar deal or multi-million dollar deal, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to secure your communications by using a compliant, a controlled, and an encrypted solution that provides you with everything you need to communicate about important information to with other important people anywhere in the world. Amazing. Again, you listed some of the, I guess, the difficulties that businesses are facing there in regards to cybersecurity. So, mm -hmm. like, there's so many different. You listed yeah. maybe five or seven. Yeah. There. It's like, oh my word! So it's a big, it's a big thing now. Oh, it's massive. I mean, cyber attacks, the value of cyber attacks or the value of, of money being made from cyber attacks is increasing every single year. And that's why ransomware, for example, is a really popular method that people talk about quite a lot because in that case, the hacker gets a small amount of money every single time. So the amount of money that they make continues to increase. And that's why they get all the, the headlines because people understand the threat. People can see it in front of their eyes and the hackers are adding money into their wallets. But there's so many other issues around the ability to hack someone, be able to tap into their information, be able to get some of their financial information and steal that way. So, I mean, you've got ransomware and malware, which is, is one of them, and um, phishing emails that come through. I mean, there's nobody out there now who doesn't receive emails from O2 or Apple. Apple, yeah, probably got 20 today already. Exactly, or their banks saying, you you're eligible for this amount please insert your bank details here and we will send through this stuff or if your invoice didn't go through please provide your bank details to pay for your latest bill and it's a for me it's it's sort of a laughable i you just click on the email address and you see that it's it's not from o2 or it's not from from apple but there's a lot of people who haven't been taught that and don't understand the threat of that so there's cyber attacks happening everywhere every second and it's such a lucrative organ, such a lucrative business that these hackers are now putting their efforts into hacking people than helping people. And I mean, even you've got phishing that I spoke about, password cracking to get hold of information is extremely simple, and that's why organisations try to enforce that you change your password every month. And it's not to annoy you, it's not to just give you something to do. It's because you need to protect yourself, even with the smallest level of security that you have. You need to do that and you need to continually change everything that you have. Um, and, and obviously mobile interception is a huge one that, that we understand the threat of. It's, it's not, you know, even years ago now with the news of the world, it's only starting to get settled with their phone tapping um, scandals years ago now. But the technology was there in 2007 or whenever that happened to be able to intercept someone's conversation without that person ever knowing about it. And it's it's even more it's even simpler to do now. And it's even it's much, much, much less expensive to do. So we always go in and say, if you feel like you're communicating important information via your mobile and it's important that some of your competitors may want to know about it or some hackers may want to know about it, then you're most likely being hacked and you just don't know about it. So you need to protect yourself if you're sharing important M and A information. If you're sharing information about terror attacks, if you're law enforcement, um, finan sharing financial documents about your customers, everything you need to do, it sh there's no reason why it shouldn't be secure. It's just that a lot of people want to turn a blind eye to it, even though it's, it's, it's happening it's and it's there. And, and improvements in technology is, is always a great thing for the end user mm -hmm. because you get your new newest device or you get your newest updates or newest apps coming out. But behind the scenes with techno technological enhancements, greater technological threats as well 
So organizations, it's not a, I put this in place, that will do the job. You have to be proactive in everything that you do around protecting your systems because there's so many threats that people may not even know about yet. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I'm thinking of uh, the last couple of years we've seen a lot of celebs who've had their phones hacked and, mm-hmm. and their information being shared and sold and sc- you know scandalous uh, things are happening. So actually, phone calls can be intercepted then? Very easily, yeah. I mean, obviously, a lot of people sort of started to understand that whenever know. Edward Snowden was... was saying about you know the lawful interception and you know one of our founders used to work for a large technology company in the lawful interception space and it was a, t- it was a telco or a mobile manufacturer and they used to be able to go in three letter agency would have said i need to know what john bailey is saying because he could be saying information that, that we need to find out about effectively and they can go in simply tap into your your mobile line and listen to every single thing that you do and that information is important for, for law, enfor- law enforcement to get. Mm-hmm. But it's the point now that it's so easy to get it that it's not just law enforcement getting it anymore or intercepting and tapping into that phone call. MZ catchers and stingrays are the devices used to, to actually listen in to people's conversations. Mm-hmm. And they're so inexpensive. Ten years ago it would have cost half a million. Now it costs less than a thousand. Mm-hmm. And you can simply point it in the direction or input someone's phone number. And you're straight away listening to everything that they, they say. I mean, it was even September time. It was in Washington, D.C. There was a lot of fake cell towers found. And they weren't cell towers at all. They were built in MC catchers that were just listening to people's conversations the whole way around Washington, D.C. And that was obviously targeted towards the, the politicians and different areas. And I can't sort of talk about anything else because I'm not sure the full story. But it just shows how simple and how undetected it can go. But it's happening every single day and, and more and more and more as people can get their hands on the technology to do so. My word, I'm dumb on my phone. That's yeah. It. I didn't realise. No, it's it's very, very simple. People oh, don't realise. Don't realise. No. Didn't know when I'm in the space or di- online. I didn't know. Yeah. Incredible. I'm shocked. I'm blown away. Wow. So, again, in, in businesses then, big and, and small, is there anything that steps that businesses can take to try and protect themselves or try and... Uh, Secure themselves against the attacks like this or uh, cybersecurity problems? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just about doing research and, and sort of admitting to yourself that there's an issue. And again, as I said, it's, it starts from the ground up. You need to have a cybersecurity culture in place. You need to train the employees and the threats that they would face. Even if it's a small company, you need to, to understand that what are you really focusing in on. They might not need the entire cybersecurity suite or they might, may not need even cybersecurity insurance, but depending on the size of the, the company, they'll need to do a cybersecurity audit to understand what technologies they use, what information are they sharing, what avenues are they sharing them through, and understand that there is a solution for it. They just need to put their hand in their pocket effectively mm-hmm. and actually put some money out to protect themselves against these threats. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, even a lot of companies we would work with would ask us about email security and sort of say, well... I'm sending emails, security, using different technologies that are out in the market. That's enough. I don't need mobile, or I don't need mobile security or secure communication systems for the mobile. And our answer is very simple to that. Effectively, mo- email security or email encryption, it's as good as nothing. Because I could send you an email right now, Kieran, that could be encrypted. You may not have encryption on your side, so it's a completely open system. So I could send you an encrypted email. You could receive it. You could pass it on to 10 of your colleagues. And before you know it, you have a chain of people who I maybe didn't intend to see the email, mm-hmm. but it's completely unencrypted by the time it gets to the everywhere. So by what we offer, it's a completely closed system. It ensures that every single piece of communication that's shared, it's to the person that we meant to send it to. And even the likes of screenshots, we can block that for Android. We can send notifications for iOS to ensure that if I was to send you a message, you know that I've either taken a screenshot and sent it on to someone else, or that I forward it to someone else, or if, I, if I'm on Android, I've tried to take a screenshot and it won't work. So it ensures that every piece of information that you share, if it's meant to be internal, it will remain internal, and it won't be shared out to private and personal contacts on your own device. Incredible. Wow, so I'm blown away today. So uh, excellent. So thank you very much for coming in and, and scaring the life out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so so what's, what's the future for uh, Salt DNA? What's happening? Uh, obviously, the, the market's only going to get bigger, I think. Yeah, I think so. And um, I mean, we're, 
you'll know from conversations we've had, we're extremely busy. Um, so it's only set for growth at this minute in time. We have quite a long, long list of opportunities that we need to, to work on. We're constantly building up our partnerships and our channel partner program. Um, we're trying to bring things back into Europe and trying to get some opportunities or not get some opportunities. We're trying to close some opportunities in Europe and the UK and Ireland. Um, and we're also looking to build our footprint in North America, South America, um, and different parts of the world effectively. So things are busy, but they'll always be busier for us. Amazing. There's never any downtime and there's there's such a high level of opportunity for us to go in and tap upon. Um, the good thing for us is we're confident that we're the best in what we do. Yeah. We're the leaders in terms of what we offer. We know nobody offers what we do. So once people start to understand the threat a bit more, we're very confident that we're the solution that they'll come they'll come through and they'll they'll come to us to ask about about purchase. Amazing. Excellent. So if anyone wants to reach out, find out more about Salty and they are reach out to, to talk to you guys, what's the best way for them to do that? I mean obviously we're on the website, um saltyna.com, we're on Twitter, we're on LinkedIn, um and we're very personal people. We're very approachable people. Um feel free to reach out to us personally on LinkedIn, ask any questions you may need to ask. Um we're also happy to just meet up for a coffee and a chat. I mean we're um we're always filled with coffee from, <laughs> from different parts of Belfast. So we're always happy to have a chat. We're always happy to discuss the threats that organizations may be facing. Mm -hmm. um, or if organizations are interested in actually selling what we have to offer, mm -hmm. then we're also interested in that type of conversation. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're Belfast proud. Um, so anyone within Belfast who wants to meet up and talk, talk about what we do and how we may be able to help each other out, then we're more than happy to do so. Amazing. Excellent. Thank you very much again for your time today. No, thank you for having me. Excellent. And thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you're not as scared as I am now and uh, you're going to look at your cyber security and make sure you are safe. Uh, don't forget to check out the links below this video and visit the SALT DNA website and uh, educate yourself on, on the service they offer and, and how you can protect your own business. And hopefully we'll see you in tomorrow's video. So this is Kieran from Profile Tree coming to you from the Innovation Factory here in Springfield Road. Thank you again.